That's your question right now? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my, I had told my wife too, but like, um, at our old church that we had gone to, um, Steve Creel, I don't know if you're aware of who he is. Um, he was probably one of the biggest impacts in my life to want to learn about God and um, how to be like a godly husband and a um, godly servant. And I just owe everything to him. Just everything that I've, I remember like the very first time I'd ever gone to a Bible study, he was teaching it and just, just teaching me how, how I should be. And uh, I would just, I look up to him more than anyone. How his relationship was with his wife, and how you should, you know, treat your spouse, and how the Bible teaches you how you should, you know, should be with your wives. Like teaching you that showed me how I needed to be towards my wife, and, and to to serve God the correct way. Life and example, and like a lot of the Bible study that we used to go to, just being around him was a good example. But there's other other men also that have done that, you know, just. Not actually like one-on-one -on -one time, but like Scott Swingle has been a, a big impact in my life. And, um, just being around him in Awana and stuff like that has just been inspiring. Seeing his love for the Lord and children with the Awana and you know, when we used to do, they haven't been doing it for a while, but they used to do like the singing and their involvement with kids even though their kids were done and gone out of, out of Awana. They still were there every week doing song time with the kids and just their involvement makes me to where I'm at now where my kids are done and not in a want anymore but I still want to serve with the children at the same time just to help see them grow. When I was a little kid I always asked my parents about heaven and I was always just told if you'd be good and you know we don't kill anyone, commit any major you know that you'll go to heaven and uh, I never really got like a straightforward answer and then um, I think it was around junior high my mom took me to like, a vacation Bible school and dropped me off and uh, didn't know a single person kind of fell out of place never really heard anything about God before and uh, I thought it was like a, a punishment at the time so I didn't really I went just to go the first time and then I kind of made some friends, you know, went for the rest of the week that they had it. And then uh, I had never gone to church again after that. And then um, I met my wife now and uh, she had asked me if I wanted to go to church with them. And uh, I went one week and I really enjoyed it. And then I had started going faithfully almost probably about a year. And uh, just hearing, you know, God's word every single week, I just knew that I didn't want to live you know, separate from him after I pass away. I want to have the eternal life with Jesus. I questioned, you know, how do you get saved? And I talked to one of the deacons that was there at the church, and uh, he actually goes to Southern Highlands Kelly Bonsignori, and uh, he led me to the Lord, and I just had this ultimate feeling of like, this weight being lifted off your shoulders, like this warm, fuzzy feeling, I don't know, it was just kind of hard to describe, but I just knew at that point that ready and uh, got shortly married after that and I just became more involved when we started coming to Oasis because uh, it was probably about six months to a year after that the church had closed down that we were going to when our son was, when my wife was pregnant with junior um, she was having a lot of complications and I was out of work uh, with a with an injury and I just had this 
overwhelming feeling like you know how am I gonna you know she was on bed rest like how am I gonna make my bills like I just didn't you know it was just so you only had this you know no knowing like were you gonna keep getting a paycheck I mean, it was like a over a year long injury or work so I was, I was not knowing if I was gonna be paid or not and, and I was just so worried that he wasn't gonna make it through the pregnancy and I, you know we, we just we prayed every night, just kind of surrendered everything to him and, you know, just put all of our faith in, in God and just said, you know, show us what we need to do. And just with the continuing prayer with each other, he, his, you know, the pregnancy ended up going full term and, um, I was getting paychecks every single week in the in the mail that was not expected. It was like you kind of walked out to check the mail and there was income that you weren't expecting to have. So it made it a little bit easier knowing that she was on bed rest for almost you know five or six months um, while she was pregnant. So I think just surrendering everything to him and and just putting all of our faith in him and praying about it and just you know his weekly visits to the doctor to make sure that. He was going to survive all the way through the pregnancy or not and <clears throat> we went to go see the gender at 20 weeks and her uh, body was already trying to deliver the baby and they had to give her steroid shots to make his lungs grow faster they had to um, surgically sew him in to make sure that he wouldn't deliver and we had to do weekly visits to make sure because uh, he was not ready at the 20 weeks and uh, she had to be on bed rest till April and that was around November when we found out. Braden, they told us that, um, they call it a cerclage, so he said to picture um, a skin cell, as small as it is, and baseball thread. And that's, he had, uh, two skin cells that was it with baseball thread to hold him in and luckily like every ultrasound his foot was on either side of her pelvis like standing there and that's why they had to do a, what do you call it a c-section because he wouldn't turn he was just stuck staying right there the whole time he wouldn't move so definitely God had his hand on that but it was very uh, it was very scary it was one of those, you know, watching the doctor, knowing that he deals with this, but then you're like, we're good, right? I never said that. And it was always never, like, he would never reassure you that everything was fine, but he said, you know, what I did is working, and that's pretty much kind of the way it was, but it was very scary for a while there. And then they said Braden would be the same way, but for whatever reason, God had his hand on that and she did not have to go to a single visit and everything was normal. So it was scary, but it was also at that point where, okay, we have the two kids we wanted and we just said we're done just so there's no future problems. I love working with the children, um, with the wana and stuff like that. I, I enjoy that. I, I enjoy helping others, like as a deacon, if you know people are there and they need you to either like to pray for them or if they need something done around the house, like just helping. Um, but I think my major is just seeing the kids grow in the Lord and being able to explain Him to them so they understand. I think kind of like the more you become mature in your relationship with God, I would say. <clears throat> it would start to reflect by you being more, uh, I, I guess, like outgoing, more wanting to share the word, God's word with people, um, doing more like discipleship with others. Um, I think I'm kind of getting to the point right now where I want to co lead a life group, but I'm nervous at the same time. <laughs> so, um, I think making those steps shows your, your walk getting stronger. 
I told Monica, I'm like, I feel really lame because I'm like just trying to think of a man that's been in my life that was guidance like that. And I'm like, I feel because, you know, Jack's used him before, but I'm like, she's like, well, maybe he's just made an impact on a lot of people's lives that more people can use him. But it's just really, 